Now, next week, the government is, is expected to hear recommendations on how to make it easier for patients to complain about their NHS care. But while patients are being empowered, what about NHS workers who blow the whistle? Channel 4 News has spoken to two leading doctors who've both been effectively forced abroad to find employment in Australia after raising serious concerns here. So will anything ever change for whistleblowers? Our health and social care correspondent, Victoria MacDonald, reports. Two consultant doctors, both worked with babies and children, both blew the whistle when they saw unsafe practices at their hospitals, and both were forced to leave the UK because they could no longer find work. Their stories are startlingly similar, and yet they are nearly 20 years apart. Children were dying or being harmed because they were being operated on in a department that itself was under stress. At least 171 children died who would have survived in other units. Daniel Brown Hill, Adil Hart. The names Brad of some Brad of the Hill. children who died or who the were left were brain damaged from heart surgery at the Bristol Royal Infirmary in the mid 90s. And it was Steve Bolson, a consultant anaesthetist there at the time, who exposed the scandal. Yet he found himself a pariah within the medical profession here. Nobody likes a troublemaker. So he and his family moved to Australia. When it became apparent that the Royal College of Surgeons, the specialist societies of surgeons and the hospital were not prepared to bring um, to an end the uncontrolled killing of children unnecessarily, then somebody else had to step in and that happened to be me. Yet what really has changed since Bristol? The recent mid-staff scandal revealed that whistleblowers weren't listened to or that staff were too scared to speak out. And recently the chair of the Care Quality Commission acknowledged this to MPs. To be a whistleblower, you've got to be very, very brave. I mean, I've spoken to a couple of surgeons, for example, who are sort of alpha male types, whose careers have been severely limited because they express concerns about what was going on in their hospitals. Whistleblowing, though, can be more than just career limiting. Jobs and homes are lost and marriages break down. As Edwin Jesu Dason has discovered, he is an award-winning paediatric surgeon, a specialist in birth defects and tumours. Yet while working at Alderhey Children's Hospital in Liverpool, he and another colleague blew the whistle about bullying and patient safety in their department. I pointed out the culture of fear and bullying and asked them to try and address that and I also pointed out some cases where uh, surgery had gone wrong where the surgeon themselves were describing a lot of stress. That was in 2009. Two years later he again raised concerns and this time the trust called in the Royal College of Surgeons to investigate. They broadly concluded the department was safe. Alderhey wouldn't give us an interview. Instead, they referred us to the Royal College of Surgeons report. What they didn't mention was this, an internal review carried out the year before into the psychological stress that staff were under at the time. It makes disturbing reading. In this paragraph here, it says, many of the staff were in a high state of distress. The following paragraph says, concern for the safety of patients was a powerful theme. The report, only released because Private Eye made a Freedom of Information request, says staff had fainted or had been otherwise incapacitated whilst in theatres, and managers, management and leadership styles, described as bullying, intimidating, coercive, aggressive, hostile and vindictive. So a report which backs up some of Mr Jesudason's claims, yet he has never worked at the hospital again. The trust cites a breakdown in his working relationship with colleagues dating back to 2004, although he says there had been no complaints against him until he blew that whistle. And we have also seen an email from trust lawyers offering him a six-figure sum which he refused. He wanted to work. But last December, his High Court attempt to stop the trust sacking him collapsed and he had to pay the hospital's costs and resign. Do you regret blowing the whistle. You have to keep these things in perspective. I mean, I have not uh, lost a child as some of the parents have. I've not had a child seriously injured. I've not had to live with that. And if I don't have a career in surgery, then I've had a good education. I hope to find some other good purpose to which I can put my skills.
And that is something he may have to consider. He hasn't found work here, so is currently carrying out research in Melbourne. In a statement, Alderhey said the Trust believes that a culture of openness and honesty is vital for the maintenance of high standards. Whistleblowing can play an important part in strengthening trust in important public institutions like hospitals, they said. The two doctors are briefly back in the UK. Dr. Bolson to receive an award from the Royal College of Anaesthetists for his work in patient safety, a small consolation perhaps for all that he and his family went through. And Mr. Jesu Dason will shortly be meeting the head of the CQC to discuss his case. But after both those events are over, both doctors will leave. The NHS's loss is Australia's gain. That report from Victoria Macdonald.